Hey, all right. Good morning. Uh, it's a little chilly out here, but not too bad. Not too bad. But uh, anyways, um, man, is this some big verses here, man? I never expected to see what I saw here. Even same thing. Um, and these are verses we've all heard, right? And uh, actually, this is in Matthew six, and I believe, if not all of it, is Christ speaking, right? Um. Ah, oh, the way he led me to this. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just going to show you some of my little notes. I mean, I mean, look at this. Okay, on these verses, right? And uh, But the main verse uh, that it, he really put on my spirit, really put on my heart, there was uh, Matthew 6, uh, verse 7. Verse 7. So uh, I'll get into it because I know it's rough listening to me. And I also know it's, uh, uh, you know, videos are kind of long, but... Anyways, so <laughs> I know I hear him. He walks me right through it. This is the way his Holy Spirit revealed the deeper meaning of these words to me. And uh, so you can believe that or not, you know, those of you who do hear his voice and uh, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, um, man, I just, look, I'm going to say this, look, true wealth, true wealth, true treasure, true wealth. It's not from here. It's not of this world. It's not of this world. True, everlasting wealth is not of this world. You have to understand that. Um, and and these, these are the words of Christ, so it, it, it means a whole lot. There's some guys doing some construction on a house over there. You know, it's a little ways away. Hopefully, this mic will make up for it. Hopefully, it won't be too distracting. But anyway, so this is Matthew 6. Uh, Verses, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 21 and take a whole bunch of words back. And, and understand this. There's a, a word in here in, in like many verses in the Bible. You're going to see a word in the English that's this exact same word. Like this word reward, you're going to see it in multiple verses here. But there's two different meanings for it, actually. There's two different meanings. But in the English, if you just look at the English translation of it, you'll, you'll never get it. You'll, you'll never see it. And my dog is alerted to something. I'm not sure what. Hmm. All right. So anyways. <laughs> anyways, here we go. This is Matthew 6, uh, verses 1 through 21. And but verse 7, I'm, I'm going to just give it out the way his Holy Spirit just <laughs> unrolled it. Unrolled the scrolls to me, right? And it's Christ himself because only he can do it. He's the Lamb of God, the only one that's worthy to break that seal. Unroll the scrolls to you through the gift of his Holy Spirit. Same life-giving spirit, uh, revealing God's heart to us, this living water, right? That flows from the throne of God, straight from God's heart to us, through Christ, who is the main vine that grafts us back in, reconnects us, his right hand that reaches out to mankind and lifts us up, restores us to God, restores us into his kingdom, reconciles our relationship with God because it was severed, it was broken when we all took the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which are these rotten, dying, decaying physical forms. There it is, your eternal spiritual being that was predicated from the beginning, made, designed specifically to live with God in complete peace and harmony of one mind, of one mindset, to serve each other, to serve God, to, to be good and kind and harmonious for the good of all. You know, it's just so, I can't even put it into words, right? I can't. But anyways, here we go. So this is Matthew 6, verses 1 through 21. Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father, which is in heaven. Okay, so let's, I don't know if I should even just go over all these numbers because it takes so long, but you got to look at the numbers and then the origin, the origin, and his Holy Spirit will make words stand out and a lot of words. I don't have a great vocabulary. I have to look up and he'll tell me to look them up and look it up in the Latin. And then sometimes he'll tell me, look up what it means in the law or look up what it means in, in, uh, you know, chemistry or what, I mean, it's, I just follow his voice, right? I, I don't even know how to, I mean, you'll know what I mean if you hear his voice. So there's that. Okay. So turn your minds and respect to your intended goal, which should be to know the will of God, you, which most men want, you know, right? Want to know the will of God so you can know if what you desire is actually the best path for you to follow, right? To help you, to help lead you into the right direction for which you were predicated. 
for, which you were designed for from the beginning, okay, to have no fear and no disease of sin, not to be diseased by sin and having full possession of your own minds, to have full possessions of your own minds by this union to Christ, by this union to the Alpha, right? The Alpha and Omega, the first and last and only physical representation of God himself, God incarnate, the word that was made flesh, who is Jesus Christ, who came to reveal the truth to us, not conceal it, okay? So there's that. To have possessions of our own minds, um, own bodies, forces are, do not, so we are not destroyed, or, or wait, do not live by your own bodies, fleshly desires, not. oh, so we are not deceived to have possessions of our own minds by this union to Christ, so we are not deceived by our own bodies, fleshly desires, and lusts. Okay, so there's that. That was all found, I think, and take heed. <laughs> okay, and do not make it a practice. It says, and do not your alms. Do not make it a practice, okay, to do your work of charity in front of men, right? To do your charity work, this giving to the poor, these donations you give to the church or to the poor, uh, doing good deeds to help others that are in need. Don't do this purposely. Uh, in front of men, to, you know, so you can be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward. Now, this word here is 3408. It, 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 okay, you will have no, you will not have your uh, debt paid, <laughs> basically. Um, you will have no reward for working for God, who is the supplier, who gives you all good things, who supplies you with everything that you need, okay? So you will have no reward of your father, the one true God, your creator, who is above in heaven. So there's that verse. Now, verse two, therefore, when thou dost thy alms, do not sound a trumpet. It, look, and this goes right along. The trumpet of God will sound for first the archangel will stand up, right, with a shout, I believe. And um, then the trumpet of God will sound. Who is God's trumpet? Those are all who belong to him, who've been born again from above, reborn, having a new spirit, the God's Holy Spirit, and dwell them, writes the word on our hearts, right? Tells us, reveals the, the, the heart of God to us, right? Leads and directs us righteously into all righteousness, okay? By putting our complete faith and trust in Jesus Christ. So there's that, which and he purifies us from the inside out, from the in, within, inside out, okay? First, purifying our heart, which, which, which dictates our actions and deeds and how we uh, conduct our lives, right? And that's actually found in here too. So it's so crazy when you take a deeper study of his word, you know, and, and allow him to be your teacher. So this trumpet, like I seen, uh, the, 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 how many brothers and sisters now are saying, you better be ready because he's about to return. So first the archangel will stand up with a shout, and that could mean a lot more than what you read. Uh, just like every word does, there's a deeper spiritual meaning to that. And then the trumpet of God will sound. His trumpet are all his people who are trumpeting his return, his soon return. So understand that. So anyways, do not sound a trumpet before thee. So therefore, when you do your charity work and give good things and do good works and donate, okay, uh, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory of men so verily i say unto you they have their reward okay now let's look at some words here this trumpet so that all can see and hear of your own good works so therefore when you do charity work or make donations to the church or to the poor or do anything good for someone else don't sound this trumpet so all can see and hear you and hear of your good works and your own good deeds okay as the hypocrites do in the synagogues so those who are hypocrites and we all know what that means right do in the synagogues in the churches as the hypocrites do in the church look god's word is just as relevant today as it was back then so this is christ speaking in it 
totally applies today. So understand that, okay? As the hypocrites do in the church, and this is what turns so many people away from the churches. They think they're full of hypocrites. Oh, don't do this, don't do that. You can't do that. Like a list of laws. Oh, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do this, I don't do that. Look, all things are permissible, but not expedient. They may not be for your good. <laughs> they might not help you uh, promote the word of God. Uh, they they might make you look bad, actually, some sometimes. But if it doesn't control you, doesn't affect you, and I'm not saying go out and do drugs or anything like that. If something is controlling you, then it's no good, right? And if it's taking like a high precedence in your life, because there's a chain of command that God gives us. God first, God first, then your spouse, then your family and friends, right? God first, put these first things first, but most of us put ourselves first. Look, and, and to tell you the truth, this actually opened my eyes up to something here that I'm guilty of myself. Like when I go to church, I always want to give something in the offering. And basically, I, if I'm going to be honest, I want people to see me put something in the offering, basically. Men, mankind, I don't want them to think I'm, you know... Uh, I don't know, not willing to give to the church or whatever, you know, I feel guilty if I don't, but I think I'm, but if I want to be totally honest about it, I think I'm actually feeling guilty because people don't see me do it. And they might think, and I think I'm carrying my own burden of guilt there that I think that, uh, you know, that they're going to think less of me if I don't give something right. So, so I'm, kind of guilty of that. Actually, I am guilty of that. You know, and I ask forgiveness for that, you know, for sure. But see, there's so many things that I do do that even the people who are closest to me don't even know, you know, a lot of things, you know, and, and, and like I said, it's your first fruit. It's these spiritual gifts, these treasures, these talents, these that you've been given by God, you know, uh, spiritual gifts or, or monetarily gifts. If you, if you've been gift, <laughs> gifted in that way or, or, or talents, like I said, just giving someone a listening ear and, and empathy and you know, all that. Right. So there's many things where we're all a vital part of his body, of his church, his one true church, all those who are born again and connected to him through the main vine, who is Christ, all who are in Christ. Okay. So that's the true church. I wish people would get that in mind, you know, so, but this is going to be further clarified as we go down. So these verses here, as we go down in these verses, oh, my dog just opened the door. I got to close it. Dog. What are you doing? <laughs> the cat would get out and escape, maybe. <laughs> Don't want that. All right. So, man, I bet that dog comes right back out, too. So, anyways, <laughs> I got to get a different doorknob. <laughs> but, uh, so, anyways, uh, where are we at here? Uh, yeah like the hypocrites do in the churches. And, and when you look at this, always bragging about their good works that they're doing with your donations. This building, these buildings where men gather themselves together. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you go. And in the streets. Uh, so out in front of people... Uh, oh man, I didn't write the numbers for that. But anyways, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets in front of men, basically in the synagogues were the churches and that applies to our churches today as well. As the hypocrites do in their churches, always bragging about their good works that they're doing with your donations, gathering men, gathering themselves together in these buildings that men have made, right? There you go. Uh, so that they may have glory of men, so they can be praised by men, so they can be praised by men and thought highly of men. Barely, I say unto you, they have their reward. They have their reward, okay, which is what they were after, um, which is, you know, it, it's explained further down here. And uh, I'll go over to it because it gets more clearly understood in verse 5, I believe here. So now verse 3, but when thou doest thy alms, you know, the good works and stuff, uh, let not your left hand know what thy right hand doeth. Okay, now we have all heard that verse, right? Don't let the left hand know what the right hand's doing. But do you know what it truly means? I mean, you kind of get it. I mean, it should be kind of obvious. But do you really understand the left hand and right hand? Okay, uh, but when thou doest thy alms, don't let the left hand know what the right hand doeth. 
So the left hand is a Greek word 710, and it goes to 712, and it goes to 730, and then that's a part of the origin of 142. So, you know, you got to be led by spirit, you know. I, and I'm no better than you. It's just, I know, I hear, <laughs> I have no doubt. Okay, the left hand. So let not the left hand. Those who claim, those who claim to know the truth, those who are claiming that they are the ones that uh, lift others up better, that reveal the light of the truth, that shine the light of truth better than anyone else. That, But they are second best. So this is the left hand, those on the left hand. They are second best. Um, they claim that they can help expiate sin of others. Um, and they take other people's minds captive, right? So they, they, these people, and, and th this is talking about the churches, right? Okay. They, they claim that they can, uh, that they're the ones like you, I was told just the other day and, and God bless this man. I, I know he's very devout and everything. And I'm not saying if he's saved or not saved. I don't know that. I don't, I don't know his heart completely, but, but I do have concern for his direction a little bit, but but I, I'm not going to condemn him. I, I, I'm i not his judge, right? But uh, some of the things he said, you can't study the word for yourself. You can't understand that. That has to come from the church, the one true church. And he wasn't talking about the people who are born again of the spirit. He was talking about the largest Christian denomination on the planet, right? Basically, um, that's what he was speaking about. And that's sad because his faith is in a religion rather than Christ, it, it would seem, I can't judge, but I know he has good intentions, you know, he, you know, but, but anyways, so there's that, you know, that's a little, you know, concerning for me, uh, you know, I, you know, I, I can't say, you know, I, I, he confesses Christ, but his, 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 his like his trust is in other things. It, it appears, you know, I, I don't know. But anyways, it just it just struck me as odd. Like, oh, well, you can't understand that. You well, Christ is my teacher through the gift of His Holy Spirit. That's the only true way. Only Spirit, only the Spirit of God can reveal spiritual truth to you. Mankind can't. <laughs> okay, even your churches. I mean, they might get a little nugget here and there, and that's what our job is to do: is to plant a seed, a good seed, to make people think, stir the minds of men, so they'll take a deeper look and get closer to God. Because you get closer to God when you take the time in His Word. How much time do you take studying God's Word? How much time do you just let go of your all preconceptions you were taught by men and truly throw yourself at God's mercy and ask him to reveal the truth, reveal himself to you? I mean, it, I, you know, so anyways, um, there's that. I, I, I have a lot of squirrel, squirrel moments go off on tangents, but anyways, uh, so those on the left. It's not saying that these things are bad, right? But it's second best. It's not the most, what's the best for you, okay? So don't left, let thy left hand, those who are claiming to shine the light of the truth better than anybody else, that they're the only ones that know the truth, that they're the only ones you can go to to know the truth, that they're the only ones that can lift someone up, that they're the ones like an intermediator that can help expiate mankind's sin. Okay, so you you think, you know, like I said the other day, you, you make up your own mind on who's being spoken about here. And this could actually go for a lot of churches, actually. Um, Anyways, but it's second best. It's second best. It's not what is the best. Okay. And they actually take the minds of men captive. Okay. Because of the things they teach, right? Which aren't quite correct, right? A little leaven, leaven at the whole lump. Okay. So anyways, um, know what is right. Hand, so don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. And the right hand is uh, 1188, I believe. Where did I write that? I know I wrote that somewhere else. I didn't, because I didn't have room under that uh, word. Uh, reward, right? I know I want to write it. Uh, right hand. Let's gather it's what your right hand is doing. And, uh, Oh, over here, right hand, um, 1188, by giving your attention, so don't let the left hand, those who claim to do everything better, even though it's second best, okay, um, what the right hand is doing, by giving your full attention and your ear to the voice of Christ, <laughs> there it is, the right hand of God.
Christ. Okay. Um, so these people, the churches are second best. They they help plant a seed. They'll they'll help they'll help you, but they can't lead you into all truth and righteousness. Only Jesus Christ can reveal spiritual truth to you through the gift of His Holy Spirit. So basically, that's what it's saying. Don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. Okay. So when people say, "Oh, you got to tithe to the church, to the church, you got to give to the church," you know, it, okay. You know, so they can do these good works. It's it's like whatever you do to others, you're not supposed to do it in front of men, right? In in the churches, it said here, brag about all they do with your donations, your giving, and they gather themselves in these buildings where men gather, so they can be seen by men and 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 show you on a big screen. Here's what we're doing. Here's everything we're doing. And it's this one says not to do that, right? And I'm sure they need to be accountable. So that I guess they do need to uh, let the people know where their money's going. But how many churches you go to that are just so ornate, huge, huge ornate buildings and full of all kinds of treasures and things and stuff, right? I mean, you know, and how much salaries do these preachers make? And I know most, the majority don't make hardly any, any they don't make a really good, good wage, make, God supplies their needs, you know, for sure. But, you know, I mean, how many people are multimillionaires, you know what I mean? That, yeah, gospel's supposed to be free, freely given, right? So anyways, so there's verse three. Now verse four, that thine alms may be in secret. So he wants your, your, your charity work, your works of charity and giving and donating to be done in secret. And thy father, which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Now this word reward is 591. It's different because the first one is 3408. Okay. So understand that. But when you look at it in English, it's the same. It's the word reward. You'll never see that difference. Okay. So there's that. So he will reward thee openly. That's the, so alms um, being secret mean keep them private so it's not noticed by men. So, you know, you're not doing it to be noticed by men. And your father, you know, your heavenly father, the one who created you, the one true God, will reward thee openly. He will give you more of what you need. He'll give you more of what you truly need. And he uh, pays for your debt, your debt, in front of all, though. He rewards you openly in front of all. He pays for your debt. And what did Jesus Christ do on the cross, right? In front of all. And he will restore you and deliver you and help you again and again and again. And minister to you himself. He will comfort you and minister to you himself uh, and shower you with these spiritual gifts, this living water, right? These spiritual gifts. So there's that. And he forgives your debt daily because we all sin, right? Probably daily, <laughs> you know, whether in thought or deed or whatever, you know, it's, it's tough, man. Our flesh has to be crucified every day because our flesh wars against our spirit. So there it is. Now, verse five, and when thou prayest, thou shalt not, thou shall not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the churches. So here's now, this is where I, I was surprised to see some of this, right? So, so when you pray, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in their churches, these buildings of gathering themselves together so they can be seen by all the other men and women, you know, mankind in there and in the corners of the streets. Now, when you look at this co word corners, it's 1337 and it goes to 1119. So they kneel down in front of men so they can be seen by men in these buildings of gathering places. They gather themselves together so they can be seen by men. Okay, uh, in the streets is 4113, in these large open places. So it don't necessarily be, mean out in the streets, even though people do do it, you know, in front of other people to like, yeah, well, it'll be further explained down here. So anyways, so when you pray, 
Thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in their churches and kneeling down on their knees in these large open places so men can see them, that they may be seen of men. Verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. Now, this word reward is different than in verse 4. This word reward is 3408. So they have what they desired. They have what they wanted. Okay, this is their reward. To be considered righteous by men. This is what they desired. They want to be considered righteous men. They want to be praised by men for their piety, for their religious qualities, and for their good works, and uh, the religious acts, and uh, show of reverence. So there's that. So there's that. And, and that really, when I saw that, I had no idea corners meant kneeling down. Okay. <laughs> I mean, how could you see that? So they do this standing in their churches, these buildings, they gather themselves together in. And they kneel down in front of all the others, right? So they can be seen by men showing their reverence for God so they can have their reward, be considered righteous men and praised by other men for their piety, for their religious service and their good works. Uh, this, this quality of being religious, basically. And uh, it's a reverent show is what it is. It's a reverent show. That's what they're trying to do. So they have their reward. They had what they were actually seeking, right? So they may be seen of men. They have their reward. Now verse six, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the father, which is in secret. And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Now, do you understand this? Okay, so go into your closet. So this is, this is the way his Holy Spirit revealed it to me. So you got to understand that. You may not even see these words in there. And, I, and I'm saying, you know, we're reading translations of men. And there was a lot lost in translation. You have to be taught by Christ himself through the gift of his Holy Spirit. And so I'm just saying that. So when you pray us, enter into thy closet. Pray from your heart, your secret place which is 5009, this cl word for closet. So when you pray, pray from your heart, you know, let it be genuine and true, okay? It's your secret place. And when you have shut thy door to mankind's influence, when you shut the door of your heart to mankind's influence, okay, pray unto the Father, pray unto your heavenly Father, which is in secret, okay, who is there with you, uh, who is there with you? Yeah, pray in secret. So pray to your father who is there with you because he's a God, it's every he encompasses everything. I mean, you can't, nothing would you know, er, wow, I, I don't even know how to explain it, but <laughs> he's everywhere all at once. Okay, he sees and hears everything all at once, he's in complete <coughs> control of everything, but he has given you free will. And he already knows what's, and he puts multiple opportunities in front of every single human being to turn back to him. So mankind is without excuse, but there is an age of accountability, which may vary. So person to person, depending on what you've been exposed to. Okay. And, you know, age, obviously, and ability to comprehend things, you know, so understand that because when you're born in this world, you've been stupefied, put into a sleep of death, spiritual death, disconnected from God spiritually. And all you know is what's around you. But I do think babies, I mean, sometimes they say the dang, dang, craziest things that are very spiritual, you know, and it's, it's really crazy. But as they grow and develop, they're completely enveloped by this world and all the deception of it because the world is the strong delusion. The whole world, what you think, what you've been taught by men, your bodies are, and this world is. That's why it's such a miracle when someone sets is separated from it, broke free from the influence of it, and and turns back to God and is truly saved, born again from above with this new spirit, God's Holy Spirit, that can only be given to you through putting your faith and trust, completely surrendering completely to Jesus Christ. There's that. So, he shut the door in secret, and the father would see us in secret, you know, see true thoughts, see if you see it. He sees all, all your true thoughts and emotions, and he can see your true nature. So he sees you in secret, shall reward. He, so he sees your heart, your intentions. He, he knows 
whether your thoughts are pure and or not. He, I mean, he knows, he understands. Okay. So he can see everything that no one else can see that no one else can see. So he sees that what no one else can see. He sees into your heart and your true nature. So your father, which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. This is 591. He will give you everything you truly need as a gift freely. Okay. He will entrust you with the understanding of his word, the spiritual understanding of his word. Okay. Uh, he will give you spiritual discernment, that which profits you the best, which profits you more than anything mankind could give you. And he separates you from the influence of this world. Okay. That's the reward God gives you. And he does it openly. Okay, now here's verse seven, the one I really felt this spirit. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. And I mentioned this yesterday, okay? For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Okay, this means far more than you just reading here, okay? Far more. Okay, basically we have an oversimplification and we lost the true spiritual meaning of God's word. Okay, when it was translated into all these different languages, like we live in the land of ba Babylon where, where the languages were confused and it made people separate, okay, go their own way and break off in their little different country, you know, groups where they spoke the same, you know, put their trust in the same things of their own, right? I, so anyways, here's verse seven. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Okay, let's take a deeper look at this. It's the way this Holy Spirit laid it out to me. I hope this mic is still working. Yeah, okay. In addition to all this, when you humble yourselves before me, and understand this is Christ's teaching, okay, so his, him speaking here. So completely surrendering to my authority, giving yourselves to me completely. Wanting to understand my will for your lives. Asking for my approval, my guidance. Do not use vain. This, and this word vain means meaningless, meaningless, okay? Because it is not from, wait, vain, meaningless. Because it is not from me. It's from your own heart, okay? Basically, do not use these vain, meaningless repetitions that are practiced and constantly repeated. These vain repetitions that are practiced and constantly repeated, okay, understand this, it, it's not from your own heart because it's me, it's not from your own heart. These vain, meaningless, because it's not from your own heart, repetitions that are practiced and constantly repeated, repeated by your religious institutions that mankind has set up for themselves, for men to look unto for guidance that mankind has set up for themselves to look to for guidance. So they're looking to the church rather to, to Christ. Okay. <laughs> there you go. There you go. For their guidance to direct their path because none of these things move me. None of them move my heart to draw near and closer to you and reveal my will to you. They do not entice me to reward you with spiritual knowledge and discernment. I'm giving you the ability to understand my word completely, okay? That would make you complete, basically. That would make you complete and restore you to health and, and purify you from the inside out by the indwelling of his Holy Spirit. All this, you know, grafting you back into the main vine, you know, into the tree of life through the main vine, who is Jesus Christ, okay? Understand that these are practices and customs that have been adapted, which means made suitable for a new use. They've been modified to fit, to fit Christian worship by pagans, by pagans, these Gentiles, these idol worshipers, these people who've separated themselves from me to do their own thing, their own way, following their own path, their own teachings. Okay. They savor, meaning this tastes sweet to them. They, they enjoy it because it, it makes them, it, it makes them ex acceptable. They think it, it's, ex well, it, it's acceptable to their own minds. So they savor these things in, in their own minds. It makes it, they accept it into their own minds. And this came from the word heathen, 1482, which goes to 1484 and 1486. So look at all these things. So it's been modified to fit 
Christianity, basically, by pagans. These idol worshipers, these Gentiles, these people who have separated themselves from me and worship idols, okay, to do their own thing, their own way, following their own path, and they savor these things. It's become acceptable in their own minds. But these practices are alien to me, to the worship of the one true God. They're alien, okay? They're from heathen, fleshly, carnal-minded men. They are external practices of mankind who do not know me. This way his Holy Spirit revealed it to me. So they are customs of these beasts, these, these, these vile beasts, mankind, who devour one another. So these are the customs of these bestial men who devour one another. So they devour one another. Okay, now here's the here's big, big thing here. Okay, uh, they've... They separate themselves through these different practices, so they are not united. So by these different denominations, okay, made by mankind's carnal understanding, by mankind's interpretation of my word, of my doctrine, okay, that I have given you, okay, okay. So there you go. I mean, that's huge. Who knew that was in there? I had no idea. I had no idea. So. This is just the way the Spirit revealed it to me. And I thought that was huge. They have alienated themselves from me and they savor. So they've made these practices acceptable to them because it basically comforts themselves. And these practices are alien to me and to the worship of the one true God. They are the customs of mankind, these uh, bestial men who devour one another and have separated themselves through these different denominations that are made by mankind's carnal understanding of interpretations, these translations of men, okay, of my word, of my doctrine that I've given to them, that they have grown accustomed to, and they've grown accustomed to it. So they, these lost souls, truly believe. So these lost souls truly believe because they were taught these things by mankind that I will hear them and give them my ear and give them an answer to what they desire to be. And, and it should be to be a, a member of my true church, my kingdom to be set at one again with me. Okay. To be a member of my body, my heavenly kingdom. Okay. They desire, they think this is going to make them belong to Christ. Okay, they believe they are standing on the foundation of truth. Uh, they have been deceived because they have deceived themselves. They have not listened to me. They do not listen to me or understand what I have declared in my word. Therefore, they will have no peace. They'll have no peace. They obey the doctrines of men and discount my words, which I wrote, which I do write, which I write on the hearts of all who belong to me. So they discount it. Okay. And, and, you know, I'm not going to go into it, but when you try to tell someone some spiritual truth, you know, who came from God himself because you heard his voice, you know, once you hear his voice, you can't, there's no going back. You, I'll die on that fact. There's no going, you can't go back. He's lifted the veil. I've seen the spiritual things that are around me. And believe me, if you see it for too long. You will die up here. I mean, I've seen it. I've, and I don't even know how to describe it. I mean, once you understand our state and condition that we're in, we're born into death and condemnation, separated from God. That's why you have to be born again of the spirit, born again from above by putting your faith and trust completely in Jesus Christ and him alone to be your teacher, to unroll the scrolls to you because only the lamb of God is worthy to break the seal. Satan's put it over you. Satan's throne, which is your flesh, that Satan's, that blocks out, casts a shade, a shadow, is pure vanity, an idol, a phantom, a delusion. It's the strong delusion. You know, he, he rules you through your carnal nature, your carnal understanding, mankind's teaching. He He's completely deceived the world. <laughs> It's so crazy, man. Okay. Therefore, they'll have no peace and they be obey the doctrines of men and discount the words which I write on the hearts of all those who belong to me. So when you try to give someone, uh, you know, you can't force, right? And, and, and like he said, forgive seven times 70. You're not to dog anybody out or try to beat them over the head with the law or, or what you know that maybe they're, 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 you know, we're all at different levels, but we're to do something with whatever he gives us, right? So you can't dog people out. And, and we're not their judge. Only Christ is the righteous judge. We, we do not judge righteously by any means. <laughs> okay, so anyway, those who belong to me, they are, so they discount all those who, the words that they, 
he gives through the gift of his Holy Spirit to those who belong to him that he's written on their hearts because now we're connected. We're of one mind. We're of one body, one church, one family, one faith in Christ Jesus and him alone because we're born again of the spirit from above. Our, our, our treasure is not here on earth. Okay. To, to live is for Christ, but to die physically here is to be set free so we can go home if you're in Christ. Okay. There you go. Okay, they are backwards. They have turned away from me and they believe their own lies, their own false doctrines because of their own conceit, their excessive pride and their own knowledge and their own carnal fleshly understanding of my word. That's what he's saying. Because of their great number of followers, because the great number of their followers who are in agreement with them by their own reasoning, their own reasoning together, their own mental faculties and motives for doing so their own claims that they are that they are the way the only way to me which is not true to enter into my family there is only one way and that's through christ completely giving yourself over to him and becoming his disciple his apostle a saint of the most high god because you've been born again, born anew spiritually. He says, were anybody who's born again and part of his body a building block, a stone of his church like Peter was, then you are a saint. You're considered a saint by God, a building stone of his church, okay? But that doesn't mean we're not gonna stumble. I mean, look at how many times did Peter and Paul and all his disciples stumble and fail and admit it, right? We're to admit our faults one to another, right? For sure. Confess our sins one to another and, and you know, do whatever we can to make up for whatever wrongs or we did or, or whatever, right? Because of their great number of followers who are in agreement with them by, by their own reasoning together, by their own mental faculties of mankind, their carnal nature, these motives for doing so, their own claims that they are the way to me, to enter into my family, my kingdom. They comfort themselves by the outward observances of things they do in front of all mankind so they can be seen by others, by the many who repeat their doctrine. So this is a group of many people who repeat their same doctrine, never truly getting to personally know me personally. So they never get to know him personally because they're too wrapped up in their religion, their specific denomination, thinking that's the only way. No, <laughs> the only way is through Christ. He's the only way. He's the way, the truth, and the light to true life, to eternal life. He is the truth. He came here to reveal the truth, not conceal it. What's the word in Proverbs 25 too? Who conceals it? Elohim conceal it. Who are Elohim? Psalms 82, six says, I have said, you are all Elohim. All of us, mankind are Elohim, children of the most high God. But we have separated ourselves from him. We have fallen and now we will die like a man. Understand that? <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm paraphrased there. You know, I have in front of me, but man, you really need to, understand God's word. Who are the builders? Who are the builders? Who are the builders that rejected the cornerstone? Mankind. Not just mankind, but there's also fallen angels who knowingly rebelled. We were deceived. We believed a lie, turned our face away from God, listened to another, and were birthed into this rotten, dying, decaying physical form. Uh, uh, eternal spiritual being um, that's immortal, that took on mortality, which only begets suffering. And believe me, I know. <laughs> I need to get back to work. I've been out of work almost three months now, man. And, uh, you know, I've had four surgeries in these three months and, uh, and I need four more, but the four I need are big. So I'm trying to put them off because each one I'll be out of work for months for each one. These bodies are rotten, dying and decaying. I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you, it's, it's, <laughs> you know, but it's, it's all for his purpose, his will, his good will. And he gave us free will, which is a gift in this world is a punishment to teach us right from wrong, good from evil. All of that. He allowed us to reap what we sow. We wanted to do it. He told us not to. We did it. <laughs> there you go. So now we reap what we sow, right? There we go. So now let's go, go further here. Um, so that was verse seven. Now verse eight, be not ye therefore like unto them. For your father knoweth what things you have need of before you even ask him. <laughs> okay, verse 9. And after this manner, therefore pray ye. Now here's the Lord's prayer, right? That we're all told to chant and repeat one after another. Pray after me. Bend your knee. Kneel down in front of this big congregation. We've 
and repeat these same words. Like if it's not coming from your heart, your true intentions, you, it becomes meaningless to God and it doesn't move them. Okay, but here's this verse like you've never heard it before. And this is the way his Holy Spirit unrolled the scrolls to me, taking a deeper study of every word. This is the way his Holy Spirit revealed it. So after this manner, therefore, first I'll read it and then I'm going to go through it. And I know for a fact... Like, man, things are changing. And I, like when I saw it, I cried, man, because I have I had a Bible that I was studying for over 30 years, 35, 36 years. And, and when I opened it up one day and new verses in it had changed and people think you're crazy for saying it. Some, some can see it, some can't. Whatever that means for you, you know, but if you can't see it, I would think that's probably not a good thing. Okay. Because he, <laughs> we know what it said. So anyways, here we go. And this is the Lord's Prayer. First, I'm going to go through the whole thing, right? And then I'll go through it the way His Holy Spirit unrolled the scrolls to me. Like, like this deeper understanding of spiritual. And I, I'm no better than you, man. I'm not claiming to be. I truly ain't. I, you know, it's just, I know. I know He's revealed it to me. And I'm not always going to say it perfectly. My vocabulary stinks and I might stumble or get excited and say something a little hopefully you can glean something from it though this spiritual truth and make you take a deeper look because you you get closer to someone when you spend time with them right so how much time are you spending in god's word right what's first priority in your life put the first things first right this is the most important thing to learn while we're here okay so after this manner therefore pray you our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth you say on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses now it says debts okay as we forgive our those who trespass against us is what it says as we forgive our debtors is what it says now okay and i know what you say and you should too because that's I mean, we, we've all grew up hearing that, right? And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay. So now I'm going to go over these words. Like after this manner, it's three, seven, seven, eight. And I can go to, I don't know if that went to another. So, so he's saying, so receive and understand who it is that is rewarding you. This is Christ speaking now. So he wants you so to receive him, receive him, receive his words as truth. Okay, he's the one speaking here. And he's telling them to pray in this manner. So receive and understand who it is that's rewarding you. Okay, it's our father who is above in heaven. Understand that he is pure and holy as I am, as I am. And this is Christ speaking as Christ is. Okay, I am the one he's anointed to carry out his plan of salvation among men so you can return home and be restored from, you know, return home from where you began, from where your journey began, coming full circle, being made complete, right? Okay. Uh, let's see. Thy will be done by, in this 2307, thy will be done by the, by revealing Right. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come. Yep. Uh, yeah, where you began. Oh, that's that's thy kingdom come. So you can return home from where you began, be restored from where your journey began. Okay, they, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. By revealing yourself and your will to me, this is how he's telling us to pray. Re please reveal yourself and your will to me. While I am on this earth, while I'm in this place below, trapped, uh, being enclosed by these fixed boundaries, unable to see clearly your will, okay, as it is in heaven, as it is clearly evident in your kingdom and all those who belong to you. So this is like an unbeliever. He's telling you these people who, who were still lost and like maybe caught up in the religious teachings of men. He's telling them, you know, ask Ask God to reveal himself to you and his will to you while you are in this world, this earth, this place below, being trapped. We're all trapped here, like in a giant biodome, and, you know, I'm not going to get into that, um, enclosed by these fixed boundaries and unable to see clearly God's will, okay, as it is evident in 
your kingdom and all those who belong to you and your kingdom. Give us this day our daily bread. So, so we can uh, please furnish me with what I need daily so I can have true life. And, and so it'll strengthen my soul so I can discern clearly your direction and your will for my life so I can achieve whatever it is that you desire of me. There it is. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Okay, now that's what it says. Now you say trust for it. So please forgive my ignorance and do not leave me destitute of this treasure, this heavenly treasure that only comes from above, this spiritual wealth. Okay. And send me out, send me out to help others as we forgive our debtors. Send me out to help others let go of their own preconceived notions so I can help set others free of their own preconceived notions. They've been taught by mankind and lead us not into attentions that their own conceived notions, right? Preconceived notions so they can let go of their own preconceived notions that hold them in bondage to this world because they are unable to separate themselves from its influence over their minds. There you go. And lead us not into temptations. Please lead us inwardly, inwardly. It's an inwardly thing. Set us at one again with you, okay? Not carrying our own burdens any longer that obstruct and keep us from knowing your will for us. <laughs> okay? Let's see. Lead us not into temptation. Yeah, temptation is 3986. Okay, so lead us not into temptations. So by our bodily conditions. Okay, so here it is. So lead us inwardly by the gift of your Holy Spirit. Set us at one again with you, not carrying. So we no longer carry our own burdens of guilt and sin and everything that obstruct in, in ignorance, willful ignorance, because you're putting your faith in something else other than Jesus Christ and him alone that obstruct us from knowing your will. Okay, for us. Because of our bodily condition following our own lust and desires and this evil okay deliver us from evil okay and this evil which is 4190 this wickedness this because we're diseased by sin and this willful ignorance be being blind and deaf because we're completely under the influence of the teachings of mankind okay understand that this ignorance because they're ignorant right of, of the truth because they've been taught something for such a long time that they believe it Okay, understand that. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So they know, they know that he, his kingdom rules and is the base of all power and, and, and the source of all glory forever, of eternal life, to give eternal life. So now 14, for if you forgive men their trespasses, their stumbling, their failing to say or do what is right, their deviation, because their de deviation from the truth of this spiritual truth that only comes from God, because of the, their ignorance, this darkness, this willful, their own ignorance, darkness of their own flesh, their own carnal fleshly nature, right? So we're gonna fail, we're gonna stumble, but we're to forgive all men men's failings and stumblings of what they say or do that isn't quite right this deviation from the truth because of their ignorance their 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 darkness because of what they're connected to this world right there you go okay your heavenly father will also forgive you us because i don't know everything that's for sure man the more i study the more i know i need to learn <laughs> that's for sure Okay, so he will forgive us of our ignorance and our failings, our shortcomings, our deviation from the truth if we forgive others of the same. Like, like, like I said, I'm not going to condemn anybody. You, you know, I'm not going to make a judgment. I'm not going to pass judgment on someone, you know, and say, oh, you're, you're led by Satan because you don't belong to my church or you're, or my denomination or, 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 stuff like that. Yeah, you know, I can't do that. I can't do that. I, I don't know their heart. But I, I do have a really, and the more I get in a relationship with these people and spend time with them, which I would love to do, um, I know that I got to keep my mouth shut and like listen more than I speak. But hey, hopefully I'll get to know them better. And, and I do know some of them enough to say that they, they, their faith is in Christ, but they're also, it almost seems like they're depending on something or someone else. Right. 
to give them what they need. And uh, maybe it's the church, <laughs> you know, which keep you in bondage, basically, to them, <laughs> to enrich them, their lives, their, their institutions, whatever. I don't know. So there's that. So anyways, so that's verse 15. Now, verse 16, moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. Now, this reward is 34 eight. It's the same thing. They have what they desire to be considered righteous and religious before men and pious and everything else. They, they have what they, they were after. Okay, moreover, when you fast, that means when you abstain from satisfying your own fleshly lust and desires. You deny your fleshly lust and desires and appetites. Okay, and that's, you can do that denying your flesh by, you know, not feeding it. But, it's, but, 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 but that's just an outward thing of, of what should be occurring spiritually, okay? So anyways, so be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces. I should have looked up that word, disfigure their faces. So, so they make it known that they're doing what they're doing. They make it known in front of men, okay? So they appear more pious and religious and everything else. Oh, well, I'm fasting, you know, it's not, it sucks. I'm, you know, Okay, that they may appear unto men to pass. Verily I send to you, they have their reward, which was to look more religious and pious in front of mankind. They want to please mankind, basically in a way. Okay, or those who they believe are in, in leadership over them in the churches or, or whatever, who, you know, whatever it is. Okay, and like I said, I'm, I'm guilty of that myself. I don't, I don't want that offering plate to go by without putting something in it. I feel guilty, but it's my own guilt, my own burdens I'm carrying. I, you got to be set free from that. You don't do it to impress men, you know. So there's that. So anyways, but thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head and wash thy face. So when you deny yourself, uh, you draw closer to Christ's mind and character. Having your head... Okay, who is your Lord? Okay, anoint thine head. So you draw closer to the mind of Christ and you're being conformed to his character when you deny your fleshly lusts and desires. Who is your Lord and Savior? Who is supreme authority on his own doctrine, on his word that reveals spiritual truth to you? Okay, and it says wash your face. So he's the one who cleanses you from within that affects your acts and deeds outwardly your way of living and conducting business. So you're not going to deceive anybody. You're not going to mislead anybody. You're going to tell them the absolute truth about everything. You know, so there you go. So 18, that thou appear not unto men to fast, so you don't appear unto men to fast, but unto the Father which is in secret. And thy Father, which seeth you in secret, shall reward you. Now, this is a different word for reward than was just in verse 16. This is verse 18 now. This is 591. He shall reward thee openly. Like he will lead you into the truth. He will reveal himself to you, reveal his word, reveal spiritual truth, um, help you to understand his word from his perspective spiritually This and have spiritual discernment. Like th this reward, this spiritual treasure that's from above. Okay, 19. Lay not, and here we go, verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. Okay, lay not up yourselves treasure on earth. Okay, so we... We know what that means because the true treasure is not the riches and things of this world. Not to say that you don't need them, and, and I'm not saying it's a horrible thing, but don't put your trust in any, anything here. It's not true wealth. Okay? It's not everlasting. So where moth and rust corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. This word thieves here is 2812, where false teachers mislead you to gain your confidence and they steal your inheritance. They steal your wealth and they do it stealthily because they believe they're speaking the truth basically uh, it's the way his holy spirits reveal it to me so where they break through and steal it okay uh trust so you'll trust and depend on them to give you rest and peace of mind as but it, 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 you know yeah there you go so do not be enveloped by uh what's this word soon yeah, don't be enveloped by or consumed by the storing up of wealth of this world. 
of what this world has to offer. So lay not up your treasures for yourself on earth. Yeah, don't be enveloped or consumed with storing up earthly wealth and earthly treasures, the things that this world has to offer. So don't be let yourself be consumed by that, where moth and rust corrupts and thieves, these false teachers mislead you to gain your confidence. And that could also be someone who's telling you something does something that it doesn't. Oh, this is the greatest thing. You got to have this. Or, oh, this car's in perfect working condition when you're buying a new car. You get it and you find out the transmission's full of sawdust, right? You know, I mean, there's just so much deception out there. So they steal your wealth. They steal, and that's the spirituals played out in the physical. So understand that. Uh, hopefully your eyes can be open and you can see it and you'll glean some truth from these words that he's given me to lay out. You know, yeah. you know, and like I said, I'm not better than you. You know, I screw up all the time. So verse 20, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth or rust do corrupt and where thieves do not break through or steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So what you put your faith and trust and believe in, these things that are most valuable to you in your own heart, okay, there will your heart be also. They will take control of your uh, innermost thoughts and desires. Okay, so wherever you place your trust and faith in, wherever or whoever or whatever you're placing your faith and trust in, whether it's the church or whether it's wealth of this world or whether it's science or whether it's whatever it is that's deceiving you, that's deceiving you, okay, that's where your heart will be, okay, but, okay, uh, oh, 2813 steal, steal you away from God and keep you from knowing the truth, where thieves break in. Oh, the word steal up here. Oh, I didn't, I didn't see that. It's a Greek word 2813, where thieves, these false teachers mislead you to gain your confidence and trust, break through and steal, to steal you away from God and keep you from knowing the truth. There it is on the spiritual level. That's what that's talking about. So lay up yourselves treasure in heaven where moth and rust do not corrupt and where thieves cannot break in, do not break through or steal. For where your treasure is, that's where your heart be. Okay, so where your treasure? Where's your treasure? Is it in Christ and his teaching completely dependent on him? Okay, or is it in the teachings of mankind? Is it in the riches and things of this world? Where is your where are you where is your where are you storing your treasure up? Because where that wherever you're doing that, that's where your heart will be. That's what will take control of your thoughts. Okay? Your innermost thoughts and desires. That's what'll take control of it. And if you're putting your faith and trust in your religious organization you belong to, it's misplaced. It's misplaced. You must put it in Christ and Him alone. Okay? And I'm not saying not to go to church. I'm not saying that at all. But you better understand that only the Spirit of God can reveal spiritual truth to you. You have to be connected to him. You have to be grafted back into his kingdom, his, you know, the tree of life, who is Christ, who is God, who is, encompasses everything. So understand that. But it's, it's true life. It's eternal life. It's spiritual life. It's all, everything that is good, everything that is pleasant, everything that is, it, he has nothing but good intentions for us, but we've been given free will. That's why we're in a fallen state. That's why there's so much sin and evil and corruption and death and disease and everything in this world. This is a trap. This was used as a punishment by God to teach us right from and how much he loves us, how much he cares for us and how good good is and how all that. Like we get little glimpses of it while we're here. Right. But look at the most beautiful things of this world can kill you, can take over your mind, can take over your heart, can lead you to hell. You know, I mean, the bigger tr truth of it. I mean, th there's serpents that are in the Amazon that are so beautiful. There's frogs that are so colorful. There's th But these things are so deadly and poisonous, they will kill you quickly. Okay, the spiritual is played out in the physical. And the sooner you can see that, the sooner you're awakened. Awake, awake, all who are asleep, the, the, in the sleep of death, this spiritual death, this separation from God, breathing unconsciously. You're not breathing. You, you, you don't have the breath of life until the Holy Spirit, God's Holy Spirit, who is the breath of life, comes into you. Like Genesis 1 was generic for all mankind. Theologians have been debating this for thousands of years. Why two accounts of creation? 
And Genesis 1 is generic for all mankind. Genesis 2 is specific for each individual that Christ, that God himself molds and forms through the chastisements, the trials and tribulations of this world, conforming you inwardly to the same character of his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who is God incarnate, who is the word that was made flesh, who came into the world to reveal the truth, how much he loves us. He was willing to die for us, to give up his life, to pay a penalty we could not pay because we're sinners. We're all full of sin. We did it right from the get-go. Babies aren't born in Innocent. They've already sinned. They've taken the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You have to understand that. If you don't understand that, you're going to be like most non-believers, basically. Why is there so much evil? Why do kids die? Why are children abused? Why do they get sick and cancer at young age? And Why is all this horrible? You know, and it is horrible, but, but you don't, you can't, it, it's like two completely separate opposite in opposition to each other kingdoms. Where's your faith? Where's your trust? Where are you storing up your treasure? There you go. So anyways, I hope this mic's still working. Anyways, all right. God bless you. Love and respect to everybody. Plant a good seed. I hope there was a good seed planted today. You know, I'd never expected to see that there. I had no clue. I was just led to it. You know, his spirit was urging me to take a deeper study of it. I did, and I hope I did a decent job giving it out. I know I'm fallible. I know, you know, my speech ain't all that great. You know, but he's gave me many gifts and uh, I'm doing the best I can with what I got, right? <laughs> can always do more, right? Things could always be worse and you could always do better. I mean, there's just, you know, it is what it is, right? All right, but trust and depend on him and him alone, him completely. Don't put your trust and faith in some organization set up by mankind. You know, your faith and trust is in him and him alone. But I'm not saying don't go to church because they, you know, they, you will learn. When I go there and sit and listen to a sermon, I, I hear a whole different thing going on. <laughs> you know, then, then, you know, well, I hope it ain't most of people, but unfortunately it probably is. But I, you know, and that's through spending time with him and his word, getting to know him, knowing him. And he knows me. I know he does. He's, I've seen the other side. I've seen it. And this is where people think, oh, you're crazy. You're, you're led by Satan or you're, you're deceived. You know, you, you can't, po I've had people say, you can't possibly know God. You can't possibly know it. You can't possibly hear his voice. You, it's like, really? Really? Yeah. And those same people were taken and I've seen it. Not all of them, but some of them were taken and said things and did things that they completely denied they did, but yet they did them and said them. And it was, they were demonically taken over at that moment to mock me basically. And they have no idea. I have no idea. Uh, you know, the beast is taking over, right? The beast system, this, this, this bestial animalistic nature of mankind, because they hate the truth. They despise the truth. They don't want to even hear the truth. They reject the truth and anybody who's trying to give them the truth and they're going to get, that's why you can't force anything on anybody. Dust yourself off, move on. Right. And especially someone who knows you, they know your faults, your, your insecurities. They know all kinds of things about you, what you've done in the past. And they're not most likely going to accept you. A prophet's never accepted in his own land. Right. So, and I'm not saying I'm a prophet by any stretch of the imagination, but I know this, these people uh, who, who are joined themselves completely, who be, basically who are controlled by the spirit of this world will oppress you and steal everything from you. And they want most of the people gone and dead, basically. They want this whole world for themselves and their, their family, their generations. Like if you're putting your hope and trust in any man or anything in this world, it's misplaced. These med beds and this and that and someone coming in back into power and all that misplaced trust yeah it's not about that there's a time limit that was put on our experience there's a finite number of angels that were deceived there's a finite number there's there's a finite number of time that was meant okay it has to be renovated completely by fire before it's uh, renovated renewed by christ himself only jesus christ can do it only god himself can do that mankind can Nothing mankind invents through technology or anything can make you live forever. <laughs> Have true life, eternal life. No, it's all a deception. It's all a deception. Understand that. It, and people believe it because they see it physically, but they're, 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 they're thinking with their own carnal fleshly minds. They're, they're lost. They're deceived. They're being led astray is what it is because their hope is in things of this world and mankind's technology and blah, 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 and all this stuff. It's, it's sad. It's sad to see sometimes. It really is. All right, so God bless you. Love and respect everybody. I rambled enough. Have a great day. All right, bye.